Hey everyone, two weeks until Iron Man Chattanooga, so today I want to talk to you about how I've got my bike computer set up so you can use that in your racing as well. Hey everyone, Justin here. You're on Justin Does Triathlon. So I've got two weeks left until Ironman Chattanooga and Hurricane Florence is keeping me inside on this weekend. So today I want to talk to you about how I've got my bike computer set up, what works really, really well for me. Hopefully you can use some of that information to set yours up as well. Some of this information is Chattanooga specific, but I'm also going to share with you the strategies that I have so you can apply those to your races. I'm going to go ahead and mount this guy onto the bike and we can go over there and take a look at it and I'll walk you through it all. All right, great. So I've got the Wahoo Element Bolt mounted onto my bike. Just for a little bit of perspective before we dive in too much, the bike is a Felt IA-14. This water bottle solution right here is an X-Lab Torpedo, and then mounted on top of that is my Wahoo Element Bolt. The Wahoo Element Bolt is kind of cool because I can see a total of nine different pieces of information on this main screen at once, and then I can zoom in to really focus on certain ones, which is something I'll dive into. So this main data screen is what I'm staring at the majority of my time. I also have two other screens set up. I have this climbing screen, and then next I've got a map which is showing the current course I'm on as well as my heart rate data, which is something I'll get to in a little bit. So the Wahoo Element Bolt can show nine different pieces of information at one time, and the nine total that I've got set up, my current heart rate, the current miles per hour that I'm biking at, the current grade of the road that I'm on, my lap, average heart rate, a chart of my heart rate distribution going from zone one to five for the total amount of time that I've been working out, the total amount of miles I've biked, the total amount of time I've been biking, the current temperature, and then lastly, my overall average miles per hour. I don't look at all of this when I'm biking at all times. I have my element zoomed in right around here. Next piece of information that's important to know is I do not use a power meter. So this right here, this BPM is extremely, extremely important to me. Because I'm not using a power meter, every piece of information related to the amount of power I'm putting out comes out of this heart rate number right here. So if you have a power meter, you can generally replace all of my references to heart rate with that power data. Heart rate is always going to be my number one, the most important thing that I'm focusing on at any point during a race. Because I'm doing Ironman triathlon, it's super important that I don't overexert myself in the beginning. If you're doing, say, sprint or Olympic, you might focus a little more on your average speed and let yourself suffer a little more, but generally most athletes need to know how much power they're putting out, either through a power meter or a heart rate. Next up is my miles per hour, and honestly, this is something that some people just don't display in an Ironman because that power meter or heart rate information is more important and it says more about what they need to know. But for me, I like to feel confident in knowing I'm easily gonna make the cutoffs and know broadly where I'm at. So displaying that MPH and letting myself know roughly where I'm at is really nice. So next up is grade, and this is essentially showing my percent grade in real time. I've noticed the Wahoo Element Bolt has about a five to 10 second delay before it actually adjusts the grade, but overall it's really helpful to know where I'm at with the hills. So the thing is, depending on your course, this may or may not be super necessary. My course, Ironman Chattanooga, has a ton of false flats where it'll look like you're essentially on a flat road, but it'll actually be one or 2%. And then you get a little hill and that hill looks like it might be only a one to 2% hill, but now it's actually three or four or 5%. And it's really easy to overexert yourself. So now if I wanted to zoom out a little bit, I can see my lap BPM and my heart rate zones. So the cool thing about this lap BPM is it lets me see the average heart rate for my current lap. So I have a rolling 20 minute lap and I use that for a couple of reasons. One, the element bolt actually beeps every 20 minutes at me, which is really nice because it reminds me to take my nutrition. So I use a liquid nutrition from Tailwind right there. That's really cool because it's a nice reminder to me that 20 minutes have elapsed. I need to be drinking about a third of my bottle if I haven't. Secondly, it's also a nice average so that I can see where I'm at for the last 20 minutes of heart rate. So if I've been climbing for the last 10 to 15 minutes, I know my heart rate is a little bit high. That's going to let me see, okay, maybe my heart rate has crept into the 155 for the last 10 minutes. But once I get through this lap, hopefully into a descent or something, my heart rate's gonna come back down and I'll feel comfortable with that. Next is my heart rate zones. This shows me my time spent as a chart distribution 
between heart rate zone one through five for the entire duration of the activity. It's kind of like another zoom out from the lap BPM. So whereas the lap BPM let me see my heart rate for the so-called current 20 minute interval, this lets me see how I'm doing overall in the entire duration of the event. Next up, I have both miles and total time displayed. There's gonna be people who say, you know, there's no reason to have miles displayed because there's markers on the course. The thing is though, maybe you don't remember whether that last marker was three miles ago or nine miles ago. And if something's going wrong with your nutrition and you need on-course nutrition or whatever, I really like to have that information at hand and just see where I'm at. Next up is total time. It's important that you choose total time and not active time compared to how a lot of people keep their bike computers on workouts because in a race, your total time is all that matters. So if you stop at an aid station, if you need to use the bathroom twice, whatever, your active time might be 5, 10 away from your real time. If you're the type of person who's concerned about making cutoffs, that can definitely come back to bite you. Next up, I zoom out all the way and I can see a couple more pieces of information that I don't get into much heat directly affects the amount of power that you're able to put out. So I won't use this information to change the amount of power that I'm putting out. I'm only using the heart rate. But if I'm five hours into a ride and I'm just not sure why I'm not able to put out the speed for the amount of B BPM that I'm putting down, I'll check that temperature and oh hey, it crept up to 95, but it only feels like 80. That's the reason why. And then secondly, I like to have an overall total average miles per hour because I can use that average MPH mixed with my total time to give myself a predicted finish. A couple more quick screens I want to go over real quick. This is my climbing screen. So this is going to show me an elevation profile for the course and where I'm at on the course as well as my current BPM. So especially if it's a course that you've never ridden before like a lot of long course triathlons are, I will preload the bike course into the computer so that I can see where I'm at on the course and how I'm doing with my climbing. Okay, this is a short hill, I'll be over it in two turns, or this is a long three mile climb that I really need to settle in on. And then next I've got the mapping or route page. It'll show me where I am on the course. Always defer to the on-course signage and volunteers listen to what they're saying, especially if you've never ridden the course before and it's a multi-loop course, like a two or a three loop course. If you have a sense of where you're at on the course, you might remember, oh, hey, there's a really bad descent coming up around this corner. There's a hard climb that I need to remember right at the southernmost tip. Giving yourself that little bit of information, in my opinion, becomes useful. It's nice to have it and never need it versus the alternative. I've got my heart rate listed. So again, no matter what, if I've got one piece of information, it's either heart rate or power, and I always have access to it. All right, so that's why I've got my computer set up the way I do. So I'm doing an Ironman distance triathlon and I've got some course specific stuff into play. That grade stuff is really important because Chattanooga has those false flats. If you are doing something like Florida, which is really, really flat, obviously you can skip that. But ultimately what it comes down to is really put yourself in the mindset of being on the bike and focus on trying to envision what you're gonna need, why you're gonna need it, and when you're gonna need it. So really getting the time in on your bike ahead of time nailing in what you need on race day versus just on a training session is really really important if you guys have any other questions about why i do what i do feel free to leave them in the comments down below i've got 14 days as of today until iron man chattanooga so a bunch more videos coming over the next two weeks talking about my nutrition my full bike setup travel to chattanooga and my race strategy for iron man Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. If you've got races that you're coming up that you're training for, I hope you freaking kick ass in those as well. And if you're gonna be in Chattanooga, feel free to say hi if you see me or in the comments because I love to chat with people. All right, have a great day, everybody. Go do some kick-ass training of your own and I will see you on the next one.